Welcome to this video tutorial on the new design phase for InLab Software 18.0. In this video, we will be guiding you through the step menu, including the relevant options for editing your restoration. After switching from the model phase to the design phase, you start with the first step, restoration parameters. You can review and or change the various parameters here for the current restoration. The parameters presented here are the factory settings. These are the default values, specified by the manufacturers of the materials. Nonetheless, you can adjust all parameters for the active restoration. However, this does not result in the factory settings being permanently overwritten. The friction for the restoration can be adjusted using the radial spacer parameter, whereby the radial spacer and occlusal spacer can be determined separately from each other. The initial strengths of the proximal contacts can be set via the proximal contacts strength settings. The initial strength of the occlusal contacts can be defined via the occlusal contact strength settings. The dynamic contact strength can only be set once the virtual articulation has been enabled. The initial strength of the dynamic contacts can be determined via this parameter. The final parameter determines the angle at which the crown rises from the preparation margin. If you customize certain parameters for different restoration types, you also have the option of setting up parameter profiles as an alternative. We now open the System menu and click on Parameters. Here you can see all of the parameter profiles for the different restoration types. We click on Crown Anatomic and then on Copy Preset. The factory settings are duplicated and you can give this profile a new name. In our case, we name the profile Crown 1. For demonstration purposes, we increase the value of the parameter for the radial spacer. You can either move the slide controller to the right or to the left, or enter the desired value directly in the field, as we're doing in our case. We save the new profile by confirming with OK in the Step menu. The new profile, Crown 1, now also appears with an asterisk. This means that this profile is saved as a favorite and is adopted for our restoration. You can select a different profile as your favorite at any time, for example by clicking on the factory settings and then on the asterisk. The factory settings are now set as the favorite profile once again. We end the configuration here and automatically go back to our restoration. We switch to our parameter profile for demonstration purposes and select the profile Crown 1, which we had set up previously. By clicking on OK in the Step menu, we would now confirm this profile. Enable the Apply for Similar Restoration Elements option if you wish to apply the change to all bridge elements of a similar type. However, we are going to keep our factory settings. And lastly, click on OK. Please note that modifying certain parameters or switching to a different profile may result in a new calculation for the restoration design. Any switch or change to individual parameters should therefore take place before the initial proposal is revised. At this point, we continue with the next step, Adjust Morphology. This step offers you various options. First of all, you can switch between the upper anteriors and posteriors. The morphology is selected separately according to anterior and posterior teeth. To do this, click on Tooth Database to specify a manufacturer. We proceed with the next step, Positioning. Here you can modify the position of the restorations. These are not yet connected to the preparation margin and therefore they can be moved freely. For this purpose, the Move and Rotate and Scale tools are available to you. The new positioning can be performed for each tooth, or you can group neighboring restorations and thus process several teeth simultaneously. Currently, we have grouped all posterior teeth. 
To ungroup the restorations, you can either click on one or push the escape button on your keyboard. We will continue with tooth 1-7. Then we left click and hold on one of the arrows to move the crown in this direction. For grouping all restorations, click on the next restoration and press the control key on your keyboard at the same time. Alternatively, you can push the Ctrl plus A buttons on your keyboard in order to group all restorations together. By selecting one of the arrows in the center, you can move the restorations simultaneously. Additionally, you can switch between the grouped teeth at any time. Next, we enable the linear option, move the cursor to one of the central arrows, and move the entire group as one unit. Before calculating the initial proposal, we enable the Adapted Restoration Calculation option. This way, the positions determined previously, along with the occlusal and proximal contact points of the restorations, are adjusted to the residual tooth substance. If the option is not activated, the position of the restorations is adopted one-to-one -one, and no adjustment is made to the residual tooth substance. We switch to the next step, Edit Element, to start the calculation. The calculation time may differ depending on the size of the case. In this step, additional tools are available to you for editing the crowns and pontics. We start with the Shape tool. This function enables you to shape a selected region in either the anatomical or individual way, and additionally in either two directions or four directions. We remain with the individual way in two directions. Select tooth number 1, 2, and start with the modification. You can adjust the size of the active area by using the slide controller or by pressing and holding down the right mouse button and moving it up and down. Of course, you can also reset the last adjustments made. We group together some restorations once again in order to show you a further tool. For instance, you have the option of reducing the marked restorations simultaneously and consistently for a subsequent veneering. Before we confirm this operation, we are going to adjust the reduction strength via the Reduction Strength slide controller. Alternatively, we enter the desired value directly into the field. Afterwards, we confirm with Apply and the in-lab software calculates the anatomical reduction. There are no connectors yet at this step. Before we continue, we take a look at the new restoration from different viewing angles. For revising the reduced restorations, we have the Form tool, with its three options, Add, Smooth and Remove, along with the Shape tool. In this case, we pay no attention to the anatomical shape of the reduced restorations and move on to the next step, Edit Connector. The InLab software now automatically calculates all connectors between the individual restoration elements. Once you move the mouse to one of the connectors, an overview appears at the bottom left with specifications regarding the connector cross-section, as well as the width, length, and height. You can adjust the shape, size, and position of the connectors using the available tools. We select one of the connectors and enable the Position Connector function. First of all, we show you the Scale function. Click the Scale All function to scale the entire connector. Place the mouse pointer on the connector 
press and hold down the left mouse button and move the mouse to change the size of the object. The connector cross section is displayed in red if it becomes too small. By selecting the move function, you can move different sections of the connector. Firstly, we move the central area. However, you can also select a different area of the connector. Clicking Position All moves the entire connector. Next, we continue with the last step in the design phase, the finalize step. The InLab software now calculates the entire restoration. The bridge is now one surface, which you can continue to edit with the Shape and Form tools. For demonstration purposes, we now enable the Shape tool once again. We adjust the active area of the tool and make smaller modifications in different areas for illustration purposes. To get to the final phase, we click on the double arrow in the Step menu. Restoration data is now available for export and, as such, can be transmitted to the InLab CAM software for milling. Alternatively, the data can be saved, or, with a corresponding license, it also can be saved as STL file. Thank you very much for your attention. We would like to wish you every success when working with InLab.